Hello and welcome to our webinar about the topic How can transition succeed? My name is Tom Wittig and I will be your host today leading through the webinar and the live Q&A. At the end of this webinar, I will be available for a short live Q&A and take a few questions that were submitted beforehand <clears throat> and also uh, some questions which uh, may come in during the live session today. Between the webinars, there's a, an opportunity to engage via the Facebook page, which I will explain in a second. The topic uh, of this webinar <coughs> uh, came from, uh, let's say, several uh, live workshop sessions um, and, and work in, in family and organizational constellations. And um, more and more people are coming forward and asking about the uh, topic of transition and handover in, let's say, the work-related areas in uh, organizations, in family businesses, uh, and uh, nonprofit organizations, and so on. And so the question is, um, how, how can we make sure that uh, transition and handover can be successful? Can we actually do something about it? Uh, can we become more aware about it? And that will be the big uh, topic for this webinar and probably for um, a number of follow-up webinars, <coughs> uh, depending on how the, the topic is evolving uh, through your questions, uh, your engagement, and so on. So I would like to invite you to um, actively share your thoughts, experiences, insights, but also if you have a question, feel free to ask uh, um, in the live session or in between. And so um, I would like to recap uh, from another um, webinar that that uh, was holding recently about renewal and innovation, which is related to the topic here, because also the transition is leading to something new and uh, a new person, a new leader might take over the organization. And so he or she might find himself in, in a new territory. And um, what I explained in the other webinars was the, the topic of innovation and the systemic view um, that we have to take if we want to um, become familiar and really understand the, the hidden dynamics of such a system. Um, so it is important to ask who belongs to the system. And here in this uh, green flower, um, you can see many uh, areas, many um, yeah, categories of even of people um, that belong to a job-related system, for example. Um, the clients, of course, the employees and the colleagues in their various departments or organizational functional areas. Uh, but of course, also the owner and the founder, and um, this can be sometimes the former owner or the current owner in uh, businesses who have been uh, around for a long time. There's usually um, sometimes an ancestor who has uh, founded the business, and uh, that's also important to recognize that and and bringing into uh, into the viewpoint of the entire system. But also the impacted people in a favorable or unfavorable way. We often see organizations where the clients um, are in, in trouble or clients have been hurt and likewise employees or vendors have been hurt. So that is something that has to be acknowledged and brought into the, um, the overall scheme of things because it is all related. They all uh, hang together. But when we are also talking about uh, investors, we, we need to think about the, the, the time dimension of money, for example. The earlier money has a very different quality uh, in terms of helping an organization to sometimes uh, grow and bootstrap itself and, and go forward. <clears throat> and um, that has a different quality, for example, than the money that is being earned in the organization or um, being injected by other investors later on. And when it comes to employees and, and ourselves in acting in these um, systemic views and systemic uh, uh, organizations, 
uh, we have to recognize that we are also not isolated. So we come with our families, um, our current families or our past and families, the families of, of origin, as we, we call it. So they all play together. And uh, this is important to recognize, especially when it comes to an important uh, time phase, such as a transition period in, in a business. And by transition, um, it can also have different forms. It could be that um, an owner is handing over or wants to sell the business, or a parent wants to hand over to a family member or a child. Or it could be that somebody has um, new plans and would like to move on from the current responsibilities. It, it is also not necessarily a, a fully owned business. It can, of course, happen within larger organizations, where especially where we have um, so-called strong leaders who are, um, let's say, um, an icon in the organization. So they um, being let's say, responsible or ethically minded, they also want to make sure that they leave something behind in, in good order. The other um, thing that I would like to highlight are the three essential questions when it comes to renewal and innovation. Now, this is a very um, simple tool and, and viewpoint which we can apply every time when it comes to an innovation or a renewal topic. So I would like to invite you to also um, watch the, the webinars, uh, which uh, we made available on the, uh, the YouTube channel, for example. There's also um, a very short guided course uh, about this with guided meditations uh, about each one of these questions, because each one is giving us a distinct viewpoint on a specific facet of an organization and as an as a living and breathing organism if, if you want the common challenges that we see today are um a twofold actually on the one side we have the person who is uh, let's say representing the the handover piece and here often we we hear that um it is challenging to come to a conclusion in 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 the true meaning of the word, to conclude uh, maybe even a, a whole work that uh, you know was conducted over a lifespan, and uh, more and more we find companies who are looking for successors externally, and they have difficulties in finding successors or engaging the successors in an effective way. Uh, most common and um, most prevalent is the topic of being able to let go. Um, oftentimes, uh, it is difficult to uh, step away from a business uh, because the business is also uh, in itself a part of the uh, the whole bigger scheme of things and and the entire system. And so, letting letting go of a business or let's say a, a whole masterpiece that you have worked on for your whole life is uh, difficult. It's uh, pretty much almost like a family member. And then, uh, of course, making space for the new, whatever it is. So the, the new successor with her or his own ideas and way of doing things, um, with innovation, etc. And this can be, um, a, a very challenging topic, especially in, in uh, also family owned businesses, of course. And then after, after the handover, it's sometimes difficult to catch uh, a balance, um, and move forward again in a very, new chapter of life um, and trusting that everything will be uh, in in good shape and, and taken care of. On the other side, the successor um, really also needs to make a decision in in this word decision, uh, really if you if you trace down the roots of the word, it means also to cut off the many possible opportunities, especially if you if you are in a position and you can afford to um, let's say take over a business. If you come from externally and you, you purchase a company, you may have different possibilities and opportunities. There's um, there's plenty of opportunities out there to, for example, purchase a business. So at some point in time, you have to make a conscious choice about what you are going to do because uh, it's a yeah you can say a strategic move in the sense that it's very difficult and hard to revise once you embark on this uh, pathway 
Then, of course, being ready and prepared, um, not only from a, a pure, let's say, competency perspective, but really from an uh, inward-looking perspective. Am I ready to, to take on this challenge? Am I prepared enough? Um, do I have not only the skills and the know-how, but um, am I truly prepared by myself and my mindset and uh, in my heart to take on this channel? And then, of course, it comes to really being able to understand how this bigger organism of uh, a company or an organization or a community actually works and, and how it's uh, tied together and what the relationships are between the different members. And always it's a, it's a balancing act. It's a balancing act between um, taking care of continuity, which, which may be needed and desired, and also driving change. And also a balancing between preserving what is there and what has worked, what is important to the organization and its uh, clients, of course. And what are the areas where in innovation is uh, needed <clears throat> and, and wanted by the, the players. So these are difficult uh, decisions, especially when you come um, very eager into a new situation. Uh, it could be, you know, as a, as a new um, a leader in in a group in an organization, but also when you take over a new business, um, sometimes we find that people want to do everything at once. But um, then the question is, can the uh, the organization can the people follow? And at the end of the day, it is a matter of giving and taking in tune. And what I mean by that is, um, it is like in a in a relationship that um, the um, the love for the business and for uh, the organization that's uh, that is being taken over can grow if we if we are in in balance of giving and taking if we're not uh, overreaching if we are not uh, taking too much and also if we're not giving too much. Uh, oftentimes, the the former owner wants to give more than the new owner is willing and prepared to take, or doesn't want to give at all, or less than the the new owner wants to to take. So this is something that we have to keep in mind. So how can uh, succession succeed? Uh, and I would like to give a, a few hints about these questions. And uh, I would like to um, ex expose some some questions which might lead to uh, more insights into an organization. So a good question to ask, um, and you can ask this insight yourself in, in, in your own mind, who belongs to the organization? And it would be good, of course, to have this dialogue with um, with the team or the, the person who is handing over. But really to experience it is uh, probably the best way to do it. So really understanding who belongs to the organization and what belongs to the organization, who founded it and who was there first and where did the money come from? That is an important question, uh, especially sometimes in organizations which have been around for many decades now. And then the, the, um, the people find that the money came from, um, let's say, very difficult uh, or origin, which is hurting the organization. And this knowledge is often inherent in the organization. So the question is, uh, who are those who have been there first? Uh, and that's something I will um, expand on a little bit uh, further. Then the question of who are the leaders and the followers, not only the formal leaders, but oftentimes what we find are the informal leaders and the informal ways through the organization and uh, of course the followers sometimes the the formal leaders are the followers so it's important to understand how this is uh, working in this new organization and what keeps the organization together and what is important to the people and that might be a very uh, important decisive factor in in order to carry forward and and carry on carry the spirit and the soul of an organization forward and build on it and expand it very rarely uh, does it succeed when, uh, let's say, a new person is coming in and would like to uh, completely change uh, the spirit or the culture, if, if you want. And you often hear this, that the employees say, you know, we have lost the spirit or we have lost the, uh, 
the soul of the organization. It becomes very different and they even can describe it in a way that it's becoming sometimes cold or unpersonal. And so that is something we have to keep in mind, of course. Now, how can we meet these uh, challenges? And I would like to share with you two exercises that um, I sometimes uh, lead through the Constellation workshops. Very simple ones. And you can, uh, of course, do it um, by yourself, either in your own mind or, uh, if you want, also with um, a partner where you can exercise it. So the first one uh, would be for the successor. And uh, let's say this is a little mental exercise we do now. Imagine yourself to stand in front of the whole lineup of people in the organization. And each one of them is standing in, in the line in, in the order of the origin, if you want. So the, the first person you are going to look at is the one who has been there the longest and uh, has the highest rank in the organization. And by rank, we don't mean necessarily the formal rank, but it's, a, it's, it's somebody who has been around really for a long time and being regarded by all the others. It's like the elders in the tribe, for example. And then you stand in front uh, of the person and you regard them, you look at them just how they are and you acknowledge them in the way they are and what they have contributed and who they are also for the organization. And you take your time. There's no rush, there's no need to, to hurry forward. Take your time at each one and look at them very carefully. And then when you feel that you are ready to take uh, a look at the next person, then you move on. And uh, in this way, you can look at everybody in the organization or people uh, who represent groups in the organizations or in larger organizations who, who represent a whole uh, department, for example, of an, an organization or a business or an enterprise, for example. So this is a very uh, simple and yet powerful exercise to come in tune with the organization. And I would also recommend to do that maybe a, a few times before you actually uh, are about to go into the organization. So you prepare yourself and get in tune and um, into the, the middle. You find your middle before you go into the organization. For both uh, it is equally important so for the the new person to see the people who are there but also for those who are there to be seen and to be acknowledged as who they are and uh, what they represent what they have uh, contributed and done for the organization the second exercise i would uh, like to recommend for you is uh, the corresponding piece for the person uh, who is doing the handover. And here we can work with an image of a transition. So it is also um, an exercise which you can um, do with a partner, for example, if you have somebody, or you can just do it in your own mind as a mental exercise, as a meditation. And the way it, it works is we imagine ourselves uh, standing in front of a bridge. And the bridge here as a symbol of the transition and to the path to a new chapter, to a new territory. And we can take our time and move very slowly to the bridge. And we might feel the handrails and we see that the, the bridge is, has a small ascent. So we have uh, a little bit of an effort to uh, carry out in order to get onto the bridge and uh, cross over then to the bridge onto the other side. And there we enter a new territory. We uh, Sometimes we look back with a smile or we would like to know what is going on, but our gaze is 
directed towards the new territory, the new chapter in life. And this is an exercise uh, which I also recommend for uh, people who are handing over or who are about to trans uh, transition a business. Um, it is a very significant um, period in time and sometimes it can keep us mentally and emotionally very busy and, and very um, engaged, of course, in this uh, entire time period and beyond. So take your time and um, explore that image for yourself a little bit more uh, inside you when you uh, have the time and, and uh, space for yourself and you create the time and space for yourself. And at some point in time, you might want to say for yourself in this exercise, it's over and it was great. With these two simple exercises, um, I want to conclude the um, presentation part of the webinar today. If you are interested in more material, um, there are um, some, some webinar talks and Q&A on the YouTube channel. And uh, as I mentioned before, there's also a, a small uh, course and even a, a booklet. Um, that you you can get about the three essential meditations for renewal and innovation and they are not specific to uh, the the idea of a transition or a handover it's a, a general purpose uh, meditation if you want which gets us uh, both into the the middle and in resonance with the topic but also gives us um, a way to step back to see the bigger picture of course then uh, I would uh, suggest that you, you keep in touch and subscribe to the YouTube channel and, and put yourself on the mailing list so you are being informed when the next webinars will come. Um, yes, so before I go into the Q&A and, and I pick up some of the questions, um, just a reminder, if you want to suggest a topic or share an experience that I, uh, I'm being asked to, to pick up here in the, the webinar, or if you want to suggest a seminar location or host a seminar, please feel free to reach out. The email address is shown here, constellations at wittigonia.net. Um, I won't read uh, this through this, so you can rewind in the uh, video later, but I would like to move to the Q&A, which is um, available here now live in, in the webinar, but also between the webinar uh, on the a Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash constellateur. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the questions that uh, were submitted beforehand and also those that came in um, during the, the talk today. It's always interesting to, to hear the different perspectives and uh, experiences, of course. Um, I have here a, a question which um, was submitted earlier. Um, from, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, it's either Lei or Lee from the UK, and saying, um, I took over our family business. My father, who founded it, is still there and wants to engage, uh, uh, wants to be engaged, but at the same time, he wants to retire and travel. What can I do? I don't want to hurt his feelings. From uh, your words, I'm sensing that you are um, ready and prepared to take on the business. So uh, it doesn't sound like you have any doubts uh, about moving forward. So I think you can um, also take the initiative and uh, tell your father, maybe you do that first in your own mind and, and in your meditation and imagination first. So you, you um uh, approaching your father and you just tell him, Thank you. Uh, thank you what you have built. I see what you have built and I will keep it in honor. And now it is my turn. And uh, sometimes you may even come back to him and want to ask him for advice. So rather than for him to seek something in the business which he can do, you might want to uh, ask him for an advice or 
ask him to take over uh, a task, which uh, certainly he will do with uh, pleasure. In this way, um, you can regain a, a balance uh, between the, the giving and taking and also uh, build the, the, the bridge and the confidence for, for you to take over and for your, your father to step out. Just some ideas on this uh, topic. Of course, it will be interesting to explore that a little bit further. And I hope you are, you are doing uh, great with your, your family business. Um, yes. Um, then I have, um, a question from, uh, which was submitted earlier, actually, from uh, Wietze from uh, Netherlands, which I believe I know from a, a webinar. Uh, so we share the same um, uh, education, actually. Uh, and he's writing, now that I am a pensioner, what next? Um, so thinking about the question a little bit, um, I, I would like to ask maybe there's a way to reframe the question in different ways. And you can walk around this this own particular question and, and reframe it step by step in a different way. So for example, you could say, uh, now that I have accomplished so much in my life and the life itself, um, you know, all the way leading up to retirement is an accomplishment in itself. What is next? What is next for me? Or you can ask, whom does it serve what I can do and what I can offer and what I would like to offer? So here comes again the question of serving again, um, relates to the, um, the other series about renewal and innovation. So you might want to explore that as well. Or you might simply want to ask, who next? So I wish you a good luck with this uh, question set. I'm taking, up, uh, taking on some more questions here. There's a, a question from um, yeah, Hans Joachim from Germany. Uh, I have built a company which is going very well, but my children do not want to take over. What can I do? Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, happens uh, so, so often in, in many businesses, many families. My my general advice uh, would be here, um, of course, without knowing the specific situation, and one can explore it a little bit further. But generally speaking, from what we have seen and what surfaced from other constellations, um, if you let them go their way and let them make their decision, then uh, everybody will be free to to do what is the right thing. And consider the alternative. Uh, for example, if you ask them to take over um, and they are unhappy with it, what good would it do for themselves? And again, the question here is also, whom would it serve? Does it serve anybody? You, the children, the family, the business? So th that is a, a very big and fundamental question. And sometimes we have to really jump over our shadow and over our own beliefs and, and intentions, of course. And uh, a good intention might uh, actually ruin uh, a grand plan. So uh, you might want to consider as well selling the business or handing it over to the employees in, in the organization. It's also a possibility. Again, this gives uh, everybody uh, uh, choices and also the freedom to move forward. Okay, then I have a question here from uh, Francisca. Um, we have difficulties finding a successor. The business is in good shape, but it is uh, challenging for us. Um, I would like to make a constellation. Um, how does the constellation work? Um, do I bring my family or employees? Um, yeah, and so on. Um, so that, that's a key question here. Um, well, of course, you can you can bring your your family, your partner, you you can bring your employees, but usually that's not the way how we work, and it's not uh, necessary. Um, the way we work is that uh, we we take the the issue that um, is being presented, and then we are choosing representatives. So either the person who has um, the the issue brings the issue forward, choosing representatives, of course, under guidance of the facilitator. Uh, or the facilitator is picking the question and puts them into 
into uh, the constellation, into the field. And then we, we see what is emerging in terms of the, the movement and the relationship uh, between them. And so for that, it is not necessary to um, actually bring the, the whole family or the whole business. Uh, but of course, we, uh, we would welcome that. Uh, of course, uh, that's, that's clear. Okay, so um, I think I, I covered most of the question. There were some redundant questions, which I, I hope I answered here. Again, keep in mind, you can uh, always uh, ask questions also in the Facebook group or um, submit it for the one of the next webinars, which are going to be announced step by step. And um, yes, I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. And uh, of course, wishing you good luck with your personal transition and handover in whichever role you are of the person who is uh, handing over or taking over. So I wish you all the best and good luck. <laughs>